come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, like, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Eric Wilson. And the New York Rangers got another dub tonight, beating the Anaheim Ducks with a final score of 6-4. to four. It was a huge performance out of Mika Zibanejad. Once again, Mika Magic struck in full force. Artemi Panarin with another great game. A little bit of an up-and-down game from Igor Shosturkin, but overall, another really solid performance by the New York Rangers, especially on the offensive side of the puck. So we're going to go ahead, dive into all of that, react to the game, give you the analysis. But before we really dive all the way in, Eric, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. You know, a, a Rangers dub is always a good night, you know. Um, it's really nice to see the team starting off 3-1, and one, um, which, you know, we, we knew we were going to be good this season, obviously. But you look at the teams that we have beaten. You got a great team as with the Lightning and then the Wild, now the Ducks. For some reason, we lost to the Jets, which, uh, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. But uh, we're beating, like, teams who are expected to be very good teams as well. So the fact that we're competing against top-tier teams, um, you know, give me a good feeling on the inside. This might just be our year that I finally see a Stanley Cup get raised at MSG. Well, one can only hope. Um, of course, when Eric has a good feeling on the inside, we're all feeling good on the inside. It's a great Woo! day to be a New York Rangers fan again. Another huge win. But a main storyline coming out of this game for the New York Rangers, Eric, is going to be the power play. I want you to pull up the stats on the power play, dive into it. The Rangers killed the power play. They were phenomenal on the fa- on the power play, scoring a bunch of goals. So, Eric, go ahead, dive into the yeah, stats. I mean, I mean, like right here tonight, the power play went three for four. Mm-hmm. That's a 75% power play success rate, and that's beautiful. You know, like, um, like, like a good power play is roughly between 20 to 25% successful. So to, to see that we hit 75%, that's it's amazing. Um, I know Zabanajad had one of those goals. I know Trocek had one. I believe Panarin did as well, was the final one. Um, and it, it was great. You know, we were playing very strong with the puck. Um, did not give Anaheim, like, any time to clear the puck when we were on the power play. And then even just shifted over to the penalty kill. We only took one penalty tonight. I don't remember who did it, but I'm sure it was something stupid. So I'd, I'd rather just not get mad about it. Um, and we killed it. So, you know. The, our penalty penalty kill stats continue to improve as well, as long with our power play. Special teams, just like last season, continue to be a deciding factor on if we win games or not. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just think the, the performance on the power play was super impressive tonight. You mentioned that Mika Zibanejad, another great goal on the power play, and he really balled out tonight. Uh, what What is your take on Mika Zibanejad's performance through the first four games of the season? Oh, he's, he's phenomenal. He's already at four goals four games into the season, you know. Like he's on pace to hit 82 goals, <laughs> which we know isn't going to happen, obviously. But you, hey, know, you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a historic season. Um, <laughs> but you know, just the way that he's playing, the way that he's looked on this like newly formed first line with uh, Kako up there, I can he can hit 40 to 50 goals just like Kreider did. And you know, the way that Panarin's also played too, which I'm sure we'll get into soon. It's like the same thing. They're balling out right now. Yeah, not Panarin, but you mentioned another player that I wanted to discuss with you, Capo Caco. I think he's looked really impressive for, through the first few games of the season. He's aggressive. He's on the puck. He's scoring. What are your thoughts on him, tonight's performance? Another nice goal from him, but what is your take on his performance through the first few games? I mean, great. We, we've been expecting this breakout season for a while now, and uh, for a while I was like, I keep saying it's going to happen, but like, is it actually going to happen? But, like, four games into the season, I think it's happening. <laughs> like, he's playing great. He's looking strong. He's playing confidently. And he's finally scoring goals. As it was always my biggest criticism about Kako is that he plays great, but he's just not a finisher. And it kind of looks like this season he's starting to finish. He put in his second goal of the season tonight. But, you know, two goals through four games is great. He has a couple of assists as well. And just, like, him and the rest of the kids are also playing great. Yeah, I was going to bring that up next. The rest of the kids as well. Alexis Lafreniere with a goal tonight. Philip Hedl with an assist tonight. Philip Hedl actually I thought played pretty well tonight. And really all the kids did. Kako, Lafreniere, Hedl. They all turned in pretty solid performances playing on their different lines uh, for now. But I think the Capo Kako has really mm-hmm. risen to the occasion of that first line. We're seeing some really solid performances out of him. Yeah, and I think as we've always said on this channel, the reason for that is that he's finally getting the top six ice time, you know? And the same thing with Lafreniere. I mean, it, it kind of sucks that Kravtsov is injured right now, but just that has given Kako and Lafreniere the opportunity to get top six ice time. And they are proving themselves, you know. 
you can't fully develop when you're not playing a majority of the game, just stuck down there in the bottom six. So, you know, it's just like we were like New York Rangers. We told you so. <laughs> Basically, is what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, well, we know that they love to listen to us. So, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, let's go ahead talk about the bread man, your favorite player, your favorite uh, New York Ranger. I want to hear your thoughts. Give me your takes on his performance tonight. He is the most beautiful man I've ever met in my entire life. He had a goal and three assists. This is like a second four point game of the season, and we're only four games in. This guy is insane. He's the best player in the world. I love him with all my heart. Make him a heart trophy finalist right now. That's my hot take of the day. And, yeah, he's just, you know what? You give him Trocheck, take Reinstrom out of the equation. And mm, I love I love Panarin. I'm sorry. I, I get a little enthusiastic when we talk about this guy. <laughs> That's okay. Love, to, love the enthusiasm. I mean, Panarin is playing out of his mind. As you mentioned, one goal, three assists. Could have been a couple more on both ends right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had a couple really nice passes, one in particular to Trocheck. Um, got around the defender, dumped it off to Trocheck. Great save. Uh, by Gibson. I mean, he's a world-class goalie. Yeah. It, it was a tough one uh, for some of those Rangers players, putting up some decent shots. I know, actually, Trocek had two shots that were like, how did he even save that, uh, in my opinion? So, but yeah, really just a great performance turned in from Panarin once again. Yeah, I mean, it's Panarin. What do we expect? It's Panarin, exactly. <laughs> he's dominating through the first four games. You'll love to see it. Hopefully this trend continues, and I'm absolutely certain that it will. Uh, but before we wrap up, I want to ask your take on Two more things. First of all, Ryan Strom, no points. How are you feeling? I knew this was coming. Today was the night that I always feared. The day that Ryan Strom re-entered my home, came with the MSG, and there was a good portion of the game. Like Me and Tony didn't even watch his game together. I had to watch it by myself because of how scared I was seeing that man's <laughs> face. I have very bad PTSD. If if, if Ryan Strom put up a point tonight, I, we would not be recording this video. I would just be crying in my bed. But he didn't. Because he sucks. I, oh, I don't even care that Vetrano scored against us. I love Vetrano. He's free to make whatever decisions he wants to do in life. But Ryan Strom, if you're watching this, you're awful. I hate you. Don't ever walk back into Madison Square Garden ever again. Thank you. Well, I'm glad he didn't score any points tonight because then I would have had to go solo on this one. Eric would have been crying despite the win. But at the end of the day, I know you would have recovered, been able to appreciate the great Four-point performance uh, out of Artemi Panarin and the big New York Rangers up. win. But one last thing that I want to ask you about and discuss with you before we wrap up, Igor Shosturkin, okay? <laughs> now, he let in four goals. I believe you said it was only 22 shots put up by Anaheim. So, not the best performance out of Igor Shosturkin tonight. And I recall in the first uh, – after the first game of the season, big win over the Tampa Bay Lightning, we mentioned that Ryan, uh, Igor Shosturkin – Almost said Ryan Strom for some reason. I know you absolutely would have killed me. So walk, thank God, thank God, I caught myself. <laughs> I'm on edge tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I recall Igor Shosturkin, great performance against the Lightning, and we discussed how he was picking up right where he left off, right? Mm -hmm. But then you kind of mentioned it's great to see that because a lot of the times you see goalies come off of Vesna, Vesna Trophy winning seasons and not be able to reproduce the following year. It doesn't look like that's going to happen with Igor Shosturkin. So now a few games later, not the best performance from him in the fourth game of the season. What Are you worried at all? I know it was a big win from the New York Rangers, but really it was powered by the offense. I feel like the defense was a little bit lacking in this game. And, of course, Igor Shosturkin, again, not his best performance. Now, my level of concern, not too high. I still believe in Igor, and I don't want to, you know, press the panic button far too soon because, again, I think this is way too soon in the season. But what are your thoughts on his performance tonight, and what is your outlook for him for the rest of the season? So the way that he played tonight, um, like, like you said, not his best showing. Um, there were a couple goals that like were not his fault, you know. No, no goalie in the world could say that. There could have been a brick wall and it would have gone in. Um, but you know, again, a couple like maybe he could have saved them. But like overall, the level of concern, in my opinion, is zero at this point. You know, even if you're the number one goalie in the world, you're still gonna have bad games, especially against a team who's has enough offensive star power like Anaheim. You know, you're taking shots from Trevor Zegers all night. It's like something's gonna go in, and um. You know, four goals, not a, not a great number, but I there's I don't think there's any need to worry. Um, he played great against Tampa. He played great against Minnesota. He did not play against Winnipeg. Um, but, you know, overall, I think he'll be OK. And that's something that honestly makes me feel better that like it's going to sound a little weird. The fact that he isn't carrying the team, you know, 
is that's what we saw with Henrik Lundqvist throughout like the entirety of the like mid 2000s to the mid 2010s was the only reason we were as good as we were was because Henrik Lundqvist is carrying us. He had no help on offense. So then when playoffs came around, he was tired and just couldn't get us through the playoffs. And like, that's kind of what we saw last season as well. Yeah. yeah. So now it's like, kind of like Igor will be Igor. He will play good, but he doesn't need to be Jesus Christ in between the posts <laughs> in order for us to win a game. You know, it's like, he can kind of relax, you know, and just because he lets in three or four goals doesn't mean that we're going to lose. And I like, it sounds weird, but I think that it, like, it is kind of a good thing. You know, we don't need like the Messiah. We just need a good goalie right now. <laughs> no, I, I actually completely agree. I think that is the perfect take and it's an excellent point to bring up. You know, we saw in the Eastern conference finals when Igor Shesterkin, you know, was facing too many shots and a couple of those are just bound to go in. The Rangers offense was too gassed. The lines weren't playing well. We know the Capo Caco wasn't playing at his highest level during the finals. So, you know, when you look back at that, Igor Shesterkin had to carry the team, especially through those first two games when the Rangers won. Igor Shesterkin was lights out. But as he kind of started to have some less stellar performances, not that they weren't stellar, but they were less stellar than, you know, just prime like Igor goalie, Shesterkin, just know? a good goalie. That's when the Rangers started to slip up here. But to see tonight, you know, early in the season, Igor Shesterkin slip up a little bit not have his best outing, not have his best performance, and the Rangers' offense has enough firepower to go out there and win the game anyway, I think that's actually a positive to draw from this and definitely something to be excited for for the rest of the season. Yeah, and then you can only imagine what's going to happen when, like, Igor is on his A game and then the offense is also on their A game. And the next thing you know, we're flying through the playoffs, 10 nothing wins the entire time, you know? <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood for sure, but... That's the dream, man. That is the yeah. hope. But again, another huge performance from the New York Rangers tonight to improve their record 2-3-1. and one. A great performance out of guys like Mika Zibanejad, Capo Caco, Alexi Lafreniere, of course, Artemi Panarin. Great, great game from the New York Rangers. And we're super happy to be covering it all right here on Fireside Rangers. So make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Comment down below who was your MVP of the game. What are your thoughts on the players that we discussed? And What's your take on the game in general? Let us know how you're feeling about the New York Rangers after four games. But make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, and we'll catch you all on the next one. Have a good one, and let's go Rangers. Let's go Rangers. And Ryan Strom, I'm watching you. He shoots. <laughs>